So this video is also going to be a very, very interesting video. So, you know, when you're creating a custom copilot of your own, the very first thing that comes to your mind is, what if I want to create a custom copilot that is going to base its answers upon an external knowledge base? What I mean by an external knowledge base? Well, that can be your private organizational data. Uh, or let's suppose, you know, you work in a uh, travel booking agency, in a travel agency, right? And, and you have a list of documents that contain uh, basically PDF documents that contain reviews of various hotels that come under your travel agency given by uh, the customers that have used made use of your travel agency in the past. And what if you want to create a chatbot on top of those PDF documents that can derive its answers from the content of those PDF documents. This is something which we call as grounding, grounding of data, which means basically providing a context to your chatbot to base its answers upon. So what if, let's say you want to, you want to create a chatbot that is going to base its answers upon the content that is held on a public website. What if you want to upload some files and then tell the chatbot, well, you're going to be answering from these files only from the content of these files. What if you have your data stored in Azure SQL, uh, in Azure Cosmos DB storage and stuff like that what if you want to create a chatbot based on that data which is stored in your database or what if you have word documents excel documents powerpoint presentations uh, in your shared in your sharepoint account in your onedrive account what if you want to create a chatbot that can derive its answers from the content of those documents well copilot studio solves that for you and that too in a very low to no code environment and we're going to be looking at how so again i am on Copilot Studio with this URL, copilotstudio.preview.microsoft.com. Uh, fairly simple, go to make.powerapps.com, navigate over to the Power Platform and select Copilot Studio from here. And it takes you to this area. So just in one of the videos previous to this video, we created a new Copilot with the name of Copilot Studio Demo and we created a topic in that Copilot as well. So we're, we're going to be working in that Copilot only. So if you go to, you know, the Copilot Studio Demo or the Copilot that you're working in, you must see a knowledge tab just beside the overview tab. Now this knowledge tab is going to be our main concern for this video. So if I switch over to the knowledge tab, it gives me an option to add a knowledge source. So it gives me an option to add an, add an external knowledge source. You know, I talked about public websites. It can be Word documents. It can be um, your database, your Azure database, maybe DevOps wiki site as well. Can be anything. So if you click on the add knowledge area, it gives you a couple of options. So maybe if you want to build a chatbot based upon the content that is contained in the public website, you can do that. You can also upload documents from a local computer, maybe Word documents, PDF documents. Give an external knowledge base to your co-pilot. And if you have any data stored in Microsoft Fabric, you can bring in that data. You can bring in data from Dataverse. You can bring in data from SharePoint and OneDrive. But the only thing with SharePoint and OneDrive is only users that are inside of uh, the SharePoint group of which the word document is part of only those users will have an answer will will have an access to the answer that is based upon that word document so sharepoint and onedrive work on the area around authentication and authorization because again inside of your organization you have various sharepoint groups and under those sharepoint groups you also have rbac right role based access control so sharepoint and onedrive work on those parameters uh, but again, if you want to connect to your enterprise data, you can do that. You can have enterprise websites, Azure SQL storage, uh, Azure data lake storage, generation two. Uh, then maybe if you want to connect to a SharePoint server, you can do that. Uh, and I was talking about DevOps wiki as well, right? So if you want to build a copilot on top of Azure DevOps wiki site, you can do that. Oracle SQL database is available. Uh, but yeah, for this video, we go, we're going to be working with only the public website uh, thing. So to keep the video a uh, short and uh, exciting, right? So let's select a public website. So the public website is going to be something which is, uh, you know, quite famous in my country and it's grow.in. So it's an, I guess, if I'm not mistaken, that's an Indian startup. 
uh, as far as my knowledge goes and it's a site about finance stocks and markets uh, stuff like that so i'll just select the url of this public website and make it as a knowledge base to my copilot so i'll select the public website option and paste the public website link over here but the only thing with adding public websites as external knowledge base is there are certain parameters that you need to keep in mind so if your site is external you need to make sure that it's indexed or found or found by the bing web uh, search don't use sites with forums or comments from end users that can this can reduce the relevancy of answers and another important parameter is don't include query strings more than two levels of depth or the character in your url so your url needs to be something like this uh, not including any query strings or not having more than two levels of depth all right uh, and then you click on the add button perfect uh, and then you hit the add button again and hopefully this is going to make things work just as we want them to work Alright, so if your knowledge base has been successfully added, uh, you must see things something like this. So if you go to the knowledge tab, if that is successfully added, you must see the knowledge base, the type of your knowledge base. In my case, it's a public website and the URL of the website as well and the status set to ready if it's up and working properly, if it's configured properly. Now, to test this knowledge base, before uh, before you can test this knowledge base, in the test your copilot area, make sure to hit the refresh button so that all the configurations get properly configured. So I'm just going to hit the refresh button and let's let's ask it a question so as to invoke an answer from this public facing website. So let's let's ask the copilot some questions about uh, what are stocks. Right. Like, what are stocks so hopefully it's gonna grab some information from this public facing website and present me an answer yep there we go that's that's just exactly what i was expecting so the answer is uh stocks are an investment method to build wealth uh when you invest in the stock of a company it means you own a share in the company that issued the stock and it gives me a reference as well a reference to the external knowledge base that it derived its answer from so if you click on the reference it takes you to the page of the public facing website that it uh, that it, it grounded its answer upon so it grounded its answer upon this content this this content right this this text fields that you see so that means our external knowledge base of having a public facing website is working absolutely fine let us let us ask some more questions what are stock markets so when, I, when i asked it a question exactly what are stock markets it responded me with an answer stock markets are platforms where investors trade in shares bonds and derivatives connecting buyers and sellers and it also gives me a reference if you I had a look at the answer just at the end of the answer and if you click on the reference it again takes me to the page the specific page in that particular public facing website that i added to it as a public facing external knowledge base uh, so yeah if you if you if you if you notice a bit this content that you can see all these tick boxes all these content they must match with the answer that the copilot responded you with so it's basically a summarization of all this text content that's that's what's happening under the wraps uh but yeah just a really cool feature that i find about the copilot studio it basically gives you the power of a developer without being a developer developer if you uh must say uh, and that you know very very low to no code environment and if i uh, if i were to share an experience uh, if you were to develop something like this uh, this is something which we call as rag which is which stands for retrieval augmented generation uh, if you are speaking to a developer 
and to write a custom code for this RAG architecture, the retrieval augmented generation, the, the architecture in which you provide a copilot and external knowledge, knowledge base. Writing that through scratch as a custom code is really hard and it's, it's not the work of a person that is working in a low code environment or a citizen developer. Uh, and yeah, that's, that's, that's the beauty about Copilot Studio. It makes you feel like a developer, gives you the power of being a developer without being, without you being a developer. So yeah, well, well, that's, that's really just about it. The video was a pretty interesting one, rather a long one, but yeah, much needed. Let's quickly move on to the next set of videos.